Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, let me start by thanking the Wilson Centre and the Arctic Circle representatives for arranging this event. I must say that seldom is the timing and the venue for discussions like this as crucial as it is today. These two topics, Arctic and the relations between Russia and the US, have produced thousands of column millimeters in the press and hours and hours of prime time debates, especially to lay the one. And as we all know, so much has happened in both Arctic in general and in the relations between the United States and Russia that the issues deserves a closer attention as a whole. This is important because the Arctic cooperation has been one of the few fields where all the countries have had shared understanding about the benefits for, of working together. I would go even so far to describe this cooperation as a value in itself. This is important because we know that if we want to save the Arctic, we need the Arctic countries to cooperate. But right now, we are in a situation where we seem to be lacking the trust to continue in an open and constructive manner. Many practical solutions we have managed to gain in the field of Arctic cooperation, the SAR agreement and decisions to cut back emissions, would now seem impossible to reach. This is no way to proceed with. Without trust, we lack the way forward. So, what do we do? Or what should we do? I don't have any simple answer to this. What I know is that usually in times of turmoil, we tend to seek solutions and solace from the past. The problem is that it is often just the old ways that brought us into this situation. Climate change is transforming our environment because we needed to produce more and consume more and we paid no attention to the environment. Now this has to change and it is changing, state by state, individual by individual. And what about the US-Russian relations? The days of Cold War are long gone and I would say good riddance. Decades of mistrust and suspicions favoured only few and brought instability and insecurity to the rest. And today, the people that would benefit somehow from confrontation are as few. I recognise that there are many issues where Russia and the United States does not look each other eye to eye, but Arctic is one where they should, and we all should. <clears throat> We, or at least many of you, have seen the times of containment, followed by short periods of detente. Walls have been erected and then some holes have been dicked to them. All this with a huge effort. I would like to see the time when such magnificent efforts could be combined to do something constructive and positive for a change. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that these issues we find ourselves involved with, the rearm of great power politics, is not one where you, you would come to seek the advice of a young first-term parliamentarian from a distant corner of the world. This room is full with so much foreign policy expertise that outshines many UN General Assembly discussions. But the thing is that, as a resident of Arctic, I'm also involved. I'm invited here. And that means that the decisions many of you here might make affect also me. And that means that I have to try to make my own part. Even it is a small one, trying to come up with constructive solutions. And I do believe that we can share the belief that mistrust and suspicions are not the way forward. So, this is what I know, what we all know. Climate in the Arctic is warming twice the speed than elsewhere. This development in the sphere of geo is undermining all our combined efforts to stop the climate reaching any major tipping points. It is also making it harder and harder for us to mitigate the consequences. In other words, challenges are becoming overwhelming. And in the sphere of politics, we are now witnessing how the last few threads of cooperation are being stretched to their limits. 
While Arctic cooperation has been one of the most functional and pragmatic ones in East-West relations during the last few years, we are in danger to lose the one that has actually worked. Even more, it has helped to maintain the basic connections, the actors. And that is essential in building trust. To sum up the spheres of geo and politics, by continuing the path already traveled, we get nowhere. For a period of time, the age of geopolitics seems to be out of date. And while in fashion, trends tend to return. I would like to think that in the world of politics, there is still hope for true progress. What I'm trying to say, that in the Arctic, we have real problems, ones that will come and kick us in the rear if we fail to act, problems that can be only overcome if we pool our resources and work together. And in able to succeed this, we all need the United States and the Russian Federation to work together. Arctic can be the start in this. In Arctic, we have this tradition of helping each other in times of need. This has been the only way to survive, let alone succeed. And if Arctic is a laboratory for climate change, maybe it could be also a laboratory for a cooperation. This is my sincere hope. I, for myself, am also ready to work to this end, not because I would not have anything else pressing in my everyday work at the Finnish Parliament, but because as a resident of the Arctic, I see no alternative. Thank you for the possibility to address you and share some ideas. I look forward to discussions and debate. Thanks. Thanks for